Hello, I wanted to make a pretty quick follow-up video to my last video about scraping the web with beautiful soup and requests uh, to address an important question, which is how do you deal with multiple pages of results? So let's imagine, for example, that we're here on Craigslist and we want to scrape the job titles for all of these security jobs that are being posted right now. What I showed you in the last video, you should, you should now be able to, to do that pretty easily. And the question is, what if there are, however, what if there are, I don't know, 10 pages of results? And we, want to, we want to write a script that's able to get all of those results in, in one go. And we don't necessarily know how many pages of results there are going to be. So that's what this video is about. Uh, the word for this is pagination. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to make a um, new file in Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to save it in my desktop. I'll make a new folder for this and I'll call it uh, pagination. And we'll call the file Craig's, Craigslist jobs.py. This is going to start um, just like our, our other examples. I'm going to begin by importing uh, beautiful soup and requests for requests from beautiful soup. Nope, sorry, from BS4. Import beautiful soup. And then let's just start by making a script that gets a single uh, a single page of results. So yeah, let's start with that. I'm going to go like we did before. I'm going to go back over to Craigslist. I'm going to try to figure out what the CSS selector is that we need. So I'll just right click on any one of these and go to inspect. And we can see that. Let's take a look. We've got a bunch of. Um, uh, let me just make this a little smaller so you can see better. We have a bunch of LIs, list items, um, that have the class result row. Inside of each list item with result row, there's uh, a link, uh, an A tag, that has the URL to the actual job posting. And then there's a paragraph tag. And inside of the paragraph tag, um, it looks like there is, I'm oh, sorry, there's two links. Um, and I think one of these is going to do it for us. So let's just grab, I think this is the one that we're probably going to want to have. The class is result title. Down here, result title. So let's go ahead and grab this. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to copy the URL of uh, the page. I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code. Why don't we just save this as a uh, as a variable? We'll call it URL equals, and then in quotes, and I'll just paste that. And then we'll use request to get this URL. So I'll say r equals request dot get URL. We'll put this into a beautiful soup object. We'll say soup equals beautiful soup r dot text. And then we'll go ahead and use the select method to get all of our um, all of our titles. Titles equals soup dot select dot and then I already forgot what it was result dash title result dash title and finally let's just go through these and print them out onto the screen for t in titles print t dot text. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to open up the terminal. I'm going to navigate. Let's make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to navigate to. I'm going to navigate to my desktop, and then I have a folder called pagination. And great, we've got Craigslist jobs.py. So I'll type Python three. Craigslistjobs.py, and this looks this looks right. The next thing I'm going to do, as I noticed, I forgot to put in um, our Python, our, our our HTML parser in the when we created our beautiful soup object. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. 
html.parser here. And now if I run this again, we should get this without the error. So the next step is I actually, and this is just going to make things a little bit easier for us down the line, is I actually want to put this into a function. We're going to have a function that takes as parameters uh, the URL of a Craigslist job posting and a page number and then returns the results to us. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make a method. For now, actually, our function will just take the URL and then return the results as a list, I think. So we'll, say, we'll call it get page. Get page, and it'll take a URL. And it'll also take, actually, that's it. It'll just take a URL for now, colon. And then let's just put this stuff inside. So now if I call get page URL, we get the same result. But let's, instead of just printing the titles, let's actually put them into a list. So instead of doing it quite like this, I'm going to make a new, a new uh, variable called output. I'm going to set it to be an empty list. And then when we go through key and titles, I'll write out output.append, this adds to the end of the list, output.append t.text. We should also go ahead and write t.text.strip. And strip is a string method that just removes white space from the beginning and end of a string. So some of these might have extra white space, it's just better to, to call t.text.strip on them. And then finally we will return output. Now there's a, a shorthand way of doing this in Python also uh, called a list comprehension. If we wanted to do it as a list comprehension, which I'm not going to talk too much about, you could also write it like this. Output equals t.text.strip for t in titles. And this kind of does the whole thing for us. We'll just leave it there for, uh, for the example code, but you don't have to worry about it. So now when we call get page, right, I'll go back and let's call it. When we call get page, we don't see anything on the screen. And the reason is we've called this get page function, but we haven't done anything with, with the results. So let's go down here and I'll write jobs equals get page URL. And then we could say for J in jobs print J. And now we're actually doing something with the results. We should just kind of get back to where we were before. So the next step is let's actually deal with this pagination. And to deal with the pagination, let's kind of, we have to sort of a little bit figure out the way that Craigslist deals with pagination. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this next button right here, and we're going to see what happens when you go to the next page. So I'll click next, and we'll see that the URL changed a bit. So before we were at d slash security slash search slash sec, and when I went and clicked on that link, it became search slash sec. I guess for security, and then question mark s equals 120. Let's look at another example. So instead of going to security, let's go back to uh, the jobs board and let's pick um, let's pick a different let's pick a different one. Let's pick uh, food, beverage, hospitality. Okay. So in this case, there are 1,113 results. Every time I click next here, if we look at the URL we can see, kind of start to figure out how, how Craigslist works on the back end, like how their server is set up. It says uh, slash search, we get uh, some kind of uh, code for the, the job category, uh, FBH, food, beverage, hospitality, and there's a question mark, there's an S equals, and then a number. So let's, let's see if we can find, figure out kind of like a pattern here. If I, we start with, with uh, uh, just search FBH. The next one is S equals 120, S equals 240, S equals 360, S equals 480. And so the pattern here is that there is this thing called S, and every time we go to a new page, that number that S is equal to goes up in increments by 120. And what this is telling us is that Craigslist has their site organized in a way where you see 120 jobs per page. And then when you want to go to the next page, the starting number, right? The starting number of job that you're at 
increases by 120. So there, we have to figure out a way to kind of stick this into our own code. And before we do that, I should just take a moment to briefly explain how a URL works. So let's, let's look at this URL. I'm going to uh, kind of zoom into it. We can, we can hopefully see pretty well. We have the first part of a URL is the protocol. So HTTP or HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. The protocol is followed by a colon and then two forward slashes. And then you have a domain name, which is made of a subdomain, an optional subdomain. This, in this case, it's New York. The domain, Craigslist. And then the top level domain, uh, in this case, org. Then we have a forward slash. And following the forward slash, we have what's called the path. So what's interesting about the path, and the path ends at the question mark. So this is the path. What's interesting about the path here is that on sub, -web on sub websites, the path is literally the physically on the file system where something is located. So you can set up your, your web server so that this path is literally the actual path to a, a file or folder on the, on, the, on the computer that's serving the website. Or the path can be kind of not mapped literally to the file system, but in fact um, mapped to uh, uh, some kind of router on, on the server that's actually uh, taking you to a, to a function that's querying a database and uh, returning some results. And that's likely what, what this is, right? So we have this path. And then after the path, you have what's called a query string. And a query string is just a key and a, a series of keys and values that allows you to pass data to the server and helps the you know tells the server uh, gives the server some information about what kind of thing that you want to have to receive back. So like Craigslist, all these websites are databases, right? They're all databases. There's like a there's like a database of jobs on Craigslist that you have to when you go to the website and ask for a page of jobs, you're also at, you're querying the database effectively for a certain number of jobs starting at a certain uh, record number in the database. And that's what this S is. This S is saying start with record number zero or start with record number 120 or, 100, or 240 and so on. And every website is going to be different. Every website is going to have a different sort of scheme or plan uh, for, for how they're storing data and how querying uh, or going to any particular um, page on that website queries the data and returns it to the browser. Okay, so now we know a little bit of something about a query string. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, we have to actually build this into our, um, we have to build this into our uh, web scraper, right? So let's go back and I'm actually gonna change from the security jobs just for a moment to this uh, uh, beverage food ho hospitality jobs just because there's more results. So I'll go ahead and I'll copy this. And this will become our URL up here. So I'll delete this one. And paste that in. And then we have to add this business with the query string, this S equals something. And there's two ways of doing that. Right? The first way of doing that is we could write like question mark S equals and then some number that we that we add on to the end, like you know, plus like 120 if we wanted to, right, for the second page. But there's a better way of doing this, I think a better way, that uh, requests uh, helps us with, the library requests. And that is we can, we can create a query string um, in requests by putting all of those key and value pairs into a Python dictionary. And I think that's actually gonna be what we wanna do. So for example, let's do this, I'm gonna make a new variable in our get page function, and I'm going to I'm going to call it params, and it's going to be a dictionary. So I say open squiggly bracket and close squiggly bracket, and I'll just do this on a few lines so we can see it really easily. And then what will happen is I can put a key in and then a value for that key, and those keys and values get turned into the query string. So I could write in here s colon, and then I can put the page number uh, as the value for s. So I could say s equals zero and 
this will be the first page. If I set s equals 120, that's the second page, and so on. So let's start with zero. And then to actually get this into our request, I have to add a parameter to our, our get method in requests. So I'll say comma params equals params. And now that we have this, let's just run this again really quickly. I'm going to go back over to the terminal. I'm going to run it one more time. And we've got an error. What did I do wrong? Oh, I forgot to close the quotation. Let's try this one more time. Okay. So you'll notice the last entry here is cook needed for a deli burger shop. So if I change this S to 120 and run it again, we get a we're now on the second page and I can tell because we have a different end result. Okay, so we're kind of getting closer. The next step is what if instead of uh, me like hard coding this number here, we we add this as as a as a parameter to our get page function. So comma, let's say, and we'll call it start. And I'll replace this s with start. And then finally, when I call a get page, I also have to include that number now. So I would have to say zero here, or one twenty, and so. So let's just make sure that works. I'll say 240, hit save, hit run, and it seems to work. The next step after this, the next and I think final step, is that we have to, we have to like put this into some kind of loop so that our get page function gets called over and over and over again, and that that S number, that start number, gets incremented every time it gets called. So there's a bunch of different ways of doing this. I think that the easiest way of doing it, maybe the easiest way, well, the way I'm going to do it, is I'm going to put this into a while loop. And it's going to be, I'm basically like a never ending loop. So let's take a look at this. Before I do this, actually, I'm just going to show you what a while loop is. So I could say while capital T true. And then whatever I put in here, uh, like basically the while loop says, if this statement here evaluates to true, just keep doing it, right? And so because I put just the word true, it will always be true. It'll always keep happening. It'll make an infinite loop. So I could say while true, print hello, for example. If I run this now, it'll just print hello uh, infinite number of times. If I hit control C, it'll, it'll escape for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a while loop that's always true, but that breaks that's we get we break out of the while loop if the results that get returned to us from the get page method are zero, like if we're at the end of the loop. Because and just to just to be clear how this is going to work is if I keep going next on this forever, right? S equals seven twenty now. If I make S equals five thousand, what we'll see is that there are no results. Search and you will find an end is a beginning. The harvest moon wanes. That's nice, Craigslist. So there are no results. When we run our query, right? When we run our 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 beautiful soup query and say soup.select result title, this this list is gonna be an empty, it's gonna be an empty list. There's gonna be zero things in it because there's not there are no result uh, title elements on the page. So let's make this for loop. I'm gonna say start equals zero. And we'll say while true, jobs equals get page URL comma start. And then we'll say if the length of jobs is equal to zero, and this break statement just says, just breaks you out of whatever loop you're in. So you can use this with for loops also, for loops and while loops. You can say break someplace in there. If that break happens, then this loop will end. Okay. Then finally, I have to, I, this would be an infinite loop right now because the next thing I have to do is I just have to increment start by some number. Okay. So we'll say if, if jobs equals zero, break, we're done. Otherwise, jobs is longer than zero, right? Um, which means that we should go and do the next thing. So we'll say start 
Well, actually, well, let's print the results first. We'll say for j in jobs, print j. And then we'll also say start plus equals 120. So start equals set start to be equal to whatever start was plus 120. And then finally, for the sake of, as I mentioned in the last video, pragmatism as well as politeness, we will put our script to sleep for some period of time between each of these page requests. So I'll say time.sleep and let's just do it for half of a second. Now, if I run this, this should work, although I don't, I don't think I've imported time, I haven't. So I'm gonna to go to the very top of my script and import time as well. So we can call time.sleep. And I think this should work. So if we go back over here, I can delete that. And yeah, let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. It's one page, two, keep going, we keep going, we keep going. And I think our script is working. Now, if you ever want to like break, oh, and it is, it's done now. So I didn't save, uh, I didn't save our script anywhere. If I wanted to save it, save the output of this, I could do what I did last, I mean, there's a few ways, but one way I could do it is I could just save the output of this by running the script with this greater than sign and then giving it a file name, like uh, some jobs, right, dot txt. And this'll, this will save all of those job types. Now, you could also, if you wanted to, combine like this script with some parts of that previous script that we looked at. And for example, if you wanted not just the job titles, but also like the descriptions and maybe uh, compensation, right? What you could do is instead of just returning the titles, you could have in our get page function, you could have uh, either call another function or write in here, uh, have requests make another another uh, get request to each individual job page and, and get that extra info. But uh, that's beyond the scope of this video. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any comments or questions. Thank you.